Is the Tesla Roadster that is now in space, space junk? Yeah, it's space junk. It's definitely space junk. But guess what? Shrug. Hey everyone, thank you for tuning into my channel today. I am Trace, and today we're gonna talk about SpaceX and why the hell they launched a car into orbit. Because it turns out a lot of people are mad about it. I don't know why. It's kind of a big deal. Shouldn't you be excited? By now, if you're into science at all, you've heard of the Falcon Heavy launch. It happened in early February of 2018, and it took with it Elon Musk's cherry red Tesla Roadster and a dummy named Starman. What about space junk? Aren't you worried about that? But you gotta have haters, right? People were mad. Hubris. Let's save the homeless. Why a car? Can we fix bridges? What about roads? And protecting the environment. Well and making sure that we fund the military fully. He's just full of himself. We gotta do all these things. He's just full of himself. <sighs> oh my God. People were mad. <sighs> where do I start, you guys? Where do I, where do I start? I mean, that's pretty fucking awesome. How can you get mad about that? The whole world watched this thing launch. People were super into it all over the globe. It's a globe, we saw it in the video. Flat Earther is just FYI, it's a globe. We can fix bridges and we can help the homeless and we can protect the environment and we can save the damn whales and we can go to space. There are lots of humans out there and there's lots of money out there. Zero sum attention is not zero sum action. There are seven billion people on this planet. We can get better at space exploration while doing a lot of other stuff, including watching Netflix. Just because you can only pay attention to one thing at a time doesn't mean that we as a society can't do more than one thing at a time. I'm not that surprised. I work on YouTube. People are unhappy about pretty much everything. But uh, why a car? That's the question that a lot of people have. Why launch a car into space? They've reused dragon capsules. They've reused stages. They've done all sorts of stuff and people get excited, but mostly like you and me, the nerds. What about the average human? The average guy, gal out on the street. How do you get them excited about space? You gotta do something that's relevant to them, like a car. So if I can put a car in space, I get this relevant object to every person who's ever been in a car, seen a car, driven a car, seen a car in a movie. Every one of those people can picture that car in space and that's a huge win. We need to get people excited about space. And if this is the way to do it, then one more piece of space junk isn't gonna hurt the solar system. Yes, this is space junk. However, this might be space junk we need. Rockets are dangerous. They explode. So they have to be tested a lot. And in order to test them, you have to test the engines, you have to test all the parts, they gotta test the parachutes, they gotta test the things that make the rockets float when they hit the water. You test sections and stages, you have engine firings, test firings, and all sorts of capsules and heat shields. Then you have to actually put it in space but you don't wanna lose actual equipment when things go wrong. Elon Musk himself said that this might not work, so you have to have what's called a boilerplate. A boilerplate is the name for a dummy payload. Boilerplate is essentially a piece of equipment that you can throw away if you have to. According to author Lance Erickson, that comes from a period when they were actually built at shipyards. They were just a giant hunk of mass that could be used to simulate whatever it is you were gonna launch. They were actually bits of steel that were put together so that you would have the right mass on top of your rocket. They've been used since the 1950s, it can look like the thing that they're launching like they did in the Apollo program with this spacecraft BP-1102A, which is at Smithsonian's Udvar-Hazy, and it has a real crude door on it, like a door for people. It also has rudimentary inside so that astronauts in the Apollo program could practice getting in and out of it. It was used for a variety of other things, but it was so cheap to make that they could test it on a rocket just in case that rocket exploded. Over time, they've gotten better and better, and they can be the same shape and size as the actual spacecraft, but they don't have to be. So in that case, SpaceX did kind of go off of the beaten path with this. So let me go back to why a cherry red Tesla Roadster, aside from the obvious PR implications. SpaceX's first time in orbit was in 2008 with Falcon 1. They failed three times before they succeeded to get there. And they didn't want to blow up a real spacecraft, a real satellite on these early missions because that would have made them look bad. So they put on top of it something called a mass simulator or a boilerplate launch vehicle. It simulates mass. 
It's called the rat sat, <laughs> and it was a hexagonal shaped weight. It was literally a simulation of the mass that the Falcon 1 could or would carry to orbit. So when you have a mass simulant, it can do all sorts of different things. Even the James Webb Space Telescope that's going to launch hopefully very soon, used boilerplates to test where the mirrors would go because they're very sensitive. But let's bring it back to the Falcon Heavy. The Falcon Heavy launched and literally everyone in the world was paying attention. Do you think that was because it was a big rocket? or because it was a big rocket with a Tesla in it. And we're like, why do we launch a car into space? They did it because we needed a boilerplate. Why use a boilerplate that just looks like a dragon capsule when you could use one that's a cherry red Tesla Roadster? This rocket launch was watched by literally everyone all over the planet. And in part, they probably watched because it was relatable. And they were gonna launch a dummy satellite anyway, so why not launch one that gets people excited, that revs their engines? <laughs> Our joke that I just made up. Elon Musk created a moment in human history where we all looked up at the same time. And he did it because he used a thing that we all have in our garages, a car, and he put it in space. Not only did they prove that the Falcon Heavy can launch with the mass that they needed, but it also proves that it can get the world excited about space if you do the right thing. We can fix bridges and help the homeless and launch rockets with cars on them all at the same time. And I know the big question is, isn't this just space junk then? Aren't we just contributing to the big space junk problem out there? People, that's a big deal. Yeah, you can get mad about it, but that's a big deal. Every launch creates space junk, every single one. Space is the future. We need to get there. In order to get there at the moment, we have to create space junk. Launching a car is better than launching a boilerplate. I've said it, that's my opinion. If that solar orbiting car can get a dozen girls excited about engineering, that's a huge win. What if one of those dozen girls comes up with the best way to make carbon nanotube graphene and to weave it together into a super strong rope that we can use to build a space elevator? We wouldn't need chemical launches at all. And we can get up and down to space easily enough to start cleaning up all that space junk. But they can only do that if they're inspired. And they're only gonna be inspired if people take risks and do crazy shit like this. We're like a couple hundred years from the Industrial Revolution, right? Zoom out 500,000 years, a million years. If you zoom out a million years after the Industrial Revolution, is humanity on Earth? I don't know. Are we in space? Uh, definitely, because we have to go there. Do you think that the space junk problem we're creating today is gonna still be a problem? Maybe, but it's probably gonna be like the environmental problems we've created in the last 200 years. That's my hope anyway, is that we will learn to clean them up as we go. This is like the first time you ever made French toast, right? It was probably a huge mess. The thousandth time you've made that recipe, you clean as you go. You gotta practice in order to make perfect. Space junk is a big deal and we should handle that big deal. Hopefully, we'll learn to clean as we go like a good chef. This is the same, yes, it's space junk, we can all agree with you, but we need to get up there. I know that launching a car in space is space junk. I know that it was a big PR win for Tesla, and I know that Elon Musk is really the one who benefits from all of this, but so do we, hopefully. Let's take this global excitement and put it toward getting to space. And on the way, I guarantee you, we're gonna build better bridges and we're gonna take care of the homeless better and we're gonna feed more people and we're gonna do all the things that you complain about on the internet when you say this is a waste of money. We can do both. Zero sum attention is not zero sum action because there are 7 billion of us and we can do two things at once. Thanks so much for watching my channel, everyone. Please subscribe right here on YouTube. You can come find me on Instagram and on Twitter at Trace Dominguez. Subscribe to my Patreon as well if you haven't already. I sent out rewards for my first round of patrons very recently, so if you haven't got yours yet, please send me a message. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. Viacon Science.